Google, Breitbart got a hold of, and I'm not sure how they did, they got a hold of tape from Google right after the election. And the tape from Google right after the election is pretty telling because remember, all of these major media companies have essentially suggested there is no bias at these companies. Now, just because people at a particular company are politically biased does not mean that necessarily their product is biased. But when you are talking about the art of coming up with a search engine that benefits certain results at the expense of other results, you do have to ask questions as to how exactly those algorithms are created. Now, I have friends who work for Google, and these are folks who work hard every day trying to create algorithms that are more responsive to market conditions. But there's no question that Google manipulates its data on a pretty regular basis. They've done this, for example, with regard to China, where they've cut off certain search results at the behest of the government. Why couldn't Google do that on behalf of various other political causes? The answer is they certainly could, and they have in the past. We reported here on this program, I think it was based on a, a Washington Examiner report, if I'm not mistaken, or a Daily Caller report, I can't remember. I don't want to misattribute it. There's a, there a report that Google had been attaching fact checks from left-wing sources to sources like Daily Wire, Daily Caller, Washington Examiner, but had done no such thing for sources on the left. Google had to correct it. So in other words, when you're creating an algorithm, it's garbage in, garbage out. If you start with a particular premise and the premise is politically biased, you're going to end up with a result that is also politically biased. It's hard to think that that's not what's been happening at these major tech companies like Google, particularly in the aftermath of some of the ridiculous things that are being said uh, at, at this particular meeting right after the election. So they held a company-wide meeting of kind of top executives and team leaders where everybody vented about President Trump and this tape finally broke over at Breitbart. The vice president for global affairs, Kent Walker, went off on, on President Trump suggesting that Google, which their, 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 their slogan was something like, don't be evil. But by be evil, they, they basically mean be conservative. Here is them ripping into everyone who voted for President Trump. This is the VP of global affairs. We do think that history is on our side in a profound and an important way. I would say that the moral arc of history is long, but it bends toward progress. And out of progress comes rising living standards and better health care, and ultimately the ability to transcend those forces of tribalism and, yes, reach toward justice. While it may be that the internet and globalization were part of the cause of this problem, we are also fundamentally an essential part of the solution to this problem. So, I mean, you can see the lamentation, you can see the wailing and the gnashing of teeth, people rending their garments and putting sackcloth and ashes on. And it wasn't just Kent Walker, it was also Sergey Brin, who's the co-founder of Google, who said he was deeply offended by President Trump's election. Again, all these people can have their political point of view, but if you think that this doesn't bleed into the product, it's very difficult to imagine that. And it's going to, again, underscore the level of distrust conservatives have for a lot of these major tech companies. As an immigrant and a refugee, um, I, I certainly find the selection uh, deeply offensive, and I know many of you do too. Um, and, and I think it's a very stressful time, uh, and it uh, conflicts with many of our values. Okay, so you know, there he is, Sergey Brin, basically saying that Google's values have been overridden by President Trump. Why would anybody on the right be suspicious of how these tech companies run their business? And then, this is the best part, this, this nerd in the audience gets up and starts talking about white privilege while wearing a backpack, which is always a good look, and a bunch of Google executives start applauding him for talking about white privilege at a company that is, I believe, universally run by white people. So here is, here is the, uh, the Google execs applauding Rando for shouting about white privilege. Uh, speaking yeah. to white men, there's an opportunity for you right now to understand your privilege in the society. Take the opportunity to go through the bias-busting training, read about privilege, read about the real history of oppression in our country, and tomorrow night, watch 13th, the movie that is here. If you can't watch it here, watch it on Netflix. Discuss the issues you are passionate about during Thanksgiving dinner, and don't back down and laugh it off when you hear the voice of oppression speak through metaphors, and I promise to do this. Wow, so much heroing. So much heroing. I mean, just look at the heroism on that stage. These are the same people who caved under, who knuckled under to the Chinese government when the Chinese government was trying to foster tyranny in its own country by preventing certain search results. Look at the, I mean, we have to fight white privilege in the United States, say a bunch of white guys on the stage. Just really, really amazing stuff from Google.